Five terrifying facts about the BDK killer Dennis Rader from 1974 to 1991, a serial killer operated in Kansas. He was known as BDK, an acronym he gave himself that stood for bind, torture, kill, the method he used to kill his victims. He murdered 10 people, sending letters to the police and newspapers that outlined his crimes. One included a victim's driver's license and photos of her body. And then nothing. The murders stopped and so did the letters. For 10 years, BDK was silent. But in 2004, another 11 letters were sent. They contained details of who BDK was, including the year he was born and information on his upbringing. A year later, Dennis Rader was arrested for the murders. He pled guilty and was sentenced to 10 life sentences. Fact 1 Rader was church council president and a Cub Scout leader. Dennis Rader lived a double life as a devoted family man and a sadistic killer. Rader regularly attended church services with his family at the Christ Lutheran Church, where his wife sang in the choir and he served as president of the congregation. Rader's son was a member of the Cub Scouts and Rader soon became a troop leader. In this role, Rader, who by that time had already killed two children, taught young boys how to tie knots similar to the ones he used to bind his victims. In one instance, Raider even left a Cub Scout camping trip in the middle of the night to break into the home of Marine Hedge and fatally strangle her. Fact 2 Raider murdered an entire family in 1974. Raider's first four victims were the Uteros, a Wichita family that included 38-year-old Joseph, 33-year-old Julie, 11-year-old Josephine, and 9-year-old Joseph Jr. on January 15, 1974, Raider, then 29, cut the phone lines to the family's home and forced his way inside, using a gun to subdue the Oteros. After tying the family up, Raider attempted to systematically suffocate the Oteros by placing a plastic bag over each of their heads. While this method killed Joseph Sir and Joseph Jr., Mrs. Otero survived leading Raider to fatally strangle her. When he failed to suffocate Josephine with a plastic bag, he took the 11-year-old to the basement, where he hanged her from a drain pipe. The only surviving member of the family was 15-year-old Charlie Otero, who discovered his parents' and siblings' remains when he arrived home from school that afternoon. Fact 3 Raider installed security systems for a living, some of which he installed because people were afraid of the BTK killer beginning in 1974, the same year he killed the Oteros and Catherine Bright. Raider worked for the home security company ADT. During his 14 years of employment, Raider installed alarm systems in houses all over Wichita, often speaking with worried families seeking increased protection from the BTK killer. Eventually, Raider was promoted to a supervisory position that still required him to go into the field to check on systems installed by his subordinates. Eventually, Raider left ADT to work as a compliance officer in Park City, KS, a job that mainly consisted of issuing warnings and citations to people about overgrown grass and unleashed dogs. Fact 4 Raider photographed one of his victims in church more than seven years after murdering Nancy Fox. Raider killed his next known victim, 53-year-old Marine Hedge in her Park City, KS, home on April 27, 1985. Raider strangled Hedge with his bare hands, removed her clothing, wrapped her lifeless body in a blanket, and placed her in the trunk of his car. Raider then drove to his Lutheran church and took Hedge's body inside, where he tied her up with bondage equipment and posed her in sexually explicit positions. Raider used a Polaroid camera to take obscene pictures of Hedge's body in the church before disposing of her remains in a drainage ditch, where they were eventually discovered. Fact 5 Raider took disturbing photographs of himself in addition to posing his victims in bondage positions and photographing their bodies. Raider often took photos of himself in various bondage positions, sometimes wearing his victims' clothing and lingerie. In the pictures law enforcement recovered from Raider's home, his face is obscured by a mask or bag. In some images, Raider is outside, either hanging from a tree buried in the dirt up to his neck, or lying on the ground. 
a number of other pictures were taken indoors, showing Raider both completely wrapped in plastic and almost entirely naked. And to wind, I quote from the BDK killer himself, Dennis Raider, I don't think it was actually the person that I was after. I think it was the dream. I know that's not really nice to say about a person, but they were basically an object. They were just an object. That's all they were. I had more satisfaction building up to it and afterwards than I did the actual killing of the person.